Hello and welcome back to another video. It's been a while now, about a month or so, since we did anything with pickup winding and I have been doing a little bit of experimenting with trying to not have a crank but a motor and so far I have this little uh, rubber band going to this tiny little motor right here. It's kind of hard to show you just holding it like this but it's basically just two wires and I tried a bunch of different things to have on the other end so that I could um, you know get power and I got that to work but it felt uh, weak and uh, like I couldn't really trust it to do uh, a proper job so I found this which is an old sewing machine now I've taken off already the outer shielding or cover or enclosure because it was really fiddly to get off and I felt like oh filming that will make this video very long so now we're just gonna take out the motor and see if we can't um, use it for this and I'm also gonna open up the pedal that comes with the sewing machine the thing you use for the speed and see if I can't rehouse it I hope it's just a potentiometer inside of there and nothing weird but I don't actually know anything about sewing machines. But hopefully it's just, you know, a potentiometer and I can put it on top here where the motor is going to sit. And, you know, then I can just control it that way instead. Because I think that maybe having a foot pedal for this might be annoying. I don't know. We'll see what happens uh, later down in the video. As usual with my videos, you know, I start off with ideas in my head. And sometimes I end up exactly where I think I'm going to end up. But sometimes... I don't. So let's just jump into trying to take out the motor and see what happens after that. That's the switch and the input for power. So here's the motor now. That was actually not as hard as I was thinking it would be. A little bit fiddly, but I was actually prepared for worse. Uh, but yeah, it's out now. Next thing is to try to figure out how to mount this, because as you probably can see, it has no like mounting holes or anything. Uh, the only thing it has is a couple of screw holes on the front here, which doesn't help me it's actually a nuisance for me it's worse let's see what we can do so the way i did this with this motor here which is you can obviously see it is just the rubber band that goes down to the motor head right here if i lean it like that there now you can see it and then it's just mounted in a block with a hole that i drilled into it so 
All we have to do is unscrew these screws right here. And there you can see it. I just took a piece of scrap and you can see here I tried out some color for another guitar. So yeah. So it might be hard to see. I made a line right here and that lets me put the motor's face or this edge here up to that line so that I can see that it's parallel to where the the ring head thingamajig up here that you can't see that spins the counter thing goes and so now holding it right here with the rubber band here I can see that everything sort of aligns so now I at least know that that's where the I want the motor to go and on the other one I had the motor like right here obviously not with the string going like that but but um, I'm thinking that maybe I want to keep all this area here clear so that I can put some controls for everything right there or at least that's my idea I don't know how I'm gonna attach this so I'm thinking some sort of adhesive contact but also to drill two holes and put the zip ties in so that it's both clamped in multiple ways that's my idea right now let's do that first off we need to make a mark for where to drill the holes for the zip ties holding the motor in place making sure everything is aligned again and that it looks perfect let's just now we have two marks we need one about right there and I think one right about there. So, I'm gonna drill a hole right there and right there. Okay, so I've drilled the holes right here and if we flip it over this is where my drill bit comes out now if you don't want it to be a little bit ugly like this is right here and you want nice holes like on the front where the holes look nice you need to drill into something soft but I don't care about the underside right here because when these uh, zip ties come out from the other side like this they're gonna be folded under here obviously and lie like this and they're gonna stick out basically it's not going to be a flat surface and that is annoying because i need it to be a flat surface so that this can stand up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark out and i'm going to drill no i'm going to route two channels right down like this so that they are in the channel instead of lying there basically i'm just going to measure that out and then we'll jump into routing so here i have my lines they're not perfect but but that's okay because they're basically just there to help me. I'm not 100% going to use them. And here I have my router with uh, a guard right there. And it's going to go along the side. And I'm just going to measure everything up so that it fits perfectly. And then I'm just going to route everything away. And it's going to be good. And I've put up the stop that I want here. So as you can see this thing here, it will hit this and won't be able to go any further than that. And I'm gonna put on ear protection and we'll just see what happens. And there you have it. Light sanding right here. And it will look good. Okay, so the channels are made right here and yeah, everything looks good. From the front it doesn't really look like I've done anything. And now we can just take the zip ties, run them through those holes. I hope they fit. I'm kidding. I obviously measured. Always measure everything. Even... Well, we're not gonna go there. <sighs> and because I've joked about this other times where I'm like, oh, I'm drinking something and there's nothing in. But this time I actually do have coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. Let's see what happens if we attach the um, motor with some adhesive on the other side and then clamp it with the zip ties. Okay, good. Wow, wow. 
win! So, first off, I'm gonna use some contact glue to just put it in to this spot right here. And hopefully this is gonna be enough. It's actually need anything else, but I'm doubtful. Hopefully this motor won't be too, uh, too annoying or something. I don't know. So I have a big dab like that. It's a little bit runnier than I remember it being, so I hope the glue hasn't turned bad. But if it has, we'll deal with that later. And I'm just gonna see if I can't spread it out a little bit so it looks a little bit more even. And yes, I know the sticker and everything is on this side. Um, maybe should have taken that off before, but I mean, I can, yeah, I can take it off now. Sometimes even I do silly things. I don't know why I said even I, because I've done a lot of silly things, even on this channel. So, yeah, I mean... I just made a joke, the motorway joke, which is actually not the joke you think it is, because it was actually because of this uh, anime dub, this, this show called Ghost Stories, and the English version is the greatest dub you've ever heard. So if you're into anime and you haven't seen ghost stories, then you don't even know what it is you're missing, but you're missing basically the greatest dub of anything that has ever been made. I can promise you that. If you have a bad sense of humor, uh, you're gonna love it, but if you are maybe a little bit more on the politically correct side, you might actually not like it at all, which is obvious, of course. Fine. You do you. I just remembered I should probably make sure I align this together with this and uh, yeah just to be on the safe side so now this can just be clamped in place and left to dry but obviously I'm gonna try to put in some zip ties it just goes in like this and when you hear that sound you know they're connected the right way I don't know why I'm explaining zip ties to you maybe it's just an excuse to have this sound really close to the microphone and then they can just go into their holes and then twirl around and put in two place. Something like that. I'm gonna try to match them up so that the big part of the zip tie here isn't on the underside because I didn't route it for that to fit on the underside. So I wanna keep both of those, the one on the front and the one on the back here, away from that. God, this glue smells. I think I'm gonna take plier or something and pull at these zip ties just so that they are even more snug. And I might actually even go in with some super glue once I feel like everything is super secured. I'm just gonna leave this to dry for 20 minutes or however long the glue says. Let's see. No instructions on the bottle. It's just telling me how extremely poisonous it is and that you're not allowed to smoke next to it. But that's not a problem because I don't smoke. That's gonna be the end for now. Uh, see you in a bit when the glue has dry. Okay, so while the glue is drying, let's open this up and see what's inside it. I have no idea, but by the way it sounds, I think there is actually some sort of button that is being pressed down and there is no like mechanism in place to turn a pot, which I was hoping for because I want to turn this into a pedal. I have a cool idea for a pedal that I want to do because I have this thing that I really want to like nerd in on and teach you guys about an awesome thing that I don't understand why not every guitarist is doing that I wish every guitarist was doing or at least I think it's great. Never mind, it's not important for this video but hopefully I can reuse this pedal as an enclosure for that pedal. Um, and it's going to be similar to this pedal that I made, uh, I don't know, it was a long time ago now, or not a long time ago, like a month ago or something, uh, that it's going to be a passive thing. I'm not going to tell you in this video because it's not relevant, but if you want to guess in the comments below, uh, you can do so. And I promise to uh, tell the truth if anyone guesses right, but I think this could be a cool pedal. It looks kind of cool, right? And we'll have input jacks and output jacks or something. Um, yeah, that might be difficult. I don't know where to put the input jacks. Anyway, uh, 
try to focus and stick to this video. I think you take it apart by bending the plastic. So I'm gonna put in a knife to the side here and, and see if I can maybe get this little uh, thing here. There we go. There we go. Ooh, I was wrong. There is more in here. Oh, that's interesting. That's not at all how I thought it would work. So this here, oh, it's greasy. This is actually really awesome. You have an entire little circuit here and everything. This is probably where the power is being changed. Without, you know, knowing exactly what this is and looking into it, I'm pretty sure that this is like where the power from the wall gets transformed into a voltage that the motor can handle. But it's actually, you have this potentiometer here, but it's not a regular potentiometer, it's uh, one of those... Ah, oh. and then it just presses... So there, it breaks the circuit, and then there, it starts to get power, and it just becomes... Yeah, cool. That is... that is cool. Look at that. It's a really nifty. This could be a really good way of making like a a pedal. Why haven't I seen that? Most pedals will have a uh, what do you call it? A potentiometer that is on a a string or a roll thing that will push it up and gets. But this this could actually be even better. And it's just a spring, basically going across that you press down here with the foot. And and it just presses it. Ah, messed it up. You know what happens. And then it presses it back into place. Hmm. If any of you guys watching this knows JHS or whatever, you can tell them to look inside a sewing machine and maybe they'll find something cool. I might actually have to go and buy a second-hand sewing machine just so I can mess with this. Because we're, we're not going to use this for a pedal, we're going to use this for the sewing machine, uh, winding pickup machine. Okay, so before I start fiddling with the electronics and figure out how I want things, I need to make sure that this space works for what I'm doing. And I've made this tiny little box right here. And it's going to go here. But this safety bracket that I have right here to make everything sturdier, it's in the way. So. I'm just gonna take a chisel and hopefully I can just break it off. There we go. And just take a knife and scrape a little bit. Okay, so the space is free now and I built this little thing. Looks like this. And the idea is that all the electronics will be housed in here and this will just go up next to it like this. I'm gonna drill holes into it. Like two screws here and two screws there so that it sticks in place and everything looks good. And then I can mount the controls here which will be the on off switch from the sewing machine. This one. And this little lever here for the speed. And I'll put on a back plate as well here with a little hole for these cables or whatever. And if anything breaks I can just take out the screws and, and all of that. Hopefully that will work. And the idea is basically this. This hand will be over here, where you can't see, but it will be holding the wire and everything that you've already seen in videos. And then this hand will be free. And instead of going over the crank that was up here, right where this is now, it will be here. And I'll be able to work the control knob. So basically, I'll have a control knob. Not exactly this one. Okay, so here's the wiring right now. And it might look a little bit messy right here right now, but... I'm gonna make it look nicer. I just did it like this real quickly so that it would be easier to see. Here is the plug from the wall. And you have to be dangerous, obviously, with this sort of things because um, it's dangerous. Brown wire gets connected here to the brown and then it goes through this and comes out here where the blue is, goes to the motor. And the brown wire from the motor gets connected back to a cable that goes to the wall. And these sort of connections will be neaten up as soon as I'm done with this. And here I have this tiny little switch. That's the switch and this is the, the lever. And when I push this down, it connects that one and the motor starts running. Mm -hmm. 
And the further I push this, the faster the motor goes. So I need to press it enough so that this little tiny metal pin that you can maybe not see, but it's right there, uh, gets uh, pushed in and that will start the motor going. But then after that, the further I push it that way, the higher speed. So I push it and it connects. And the motor starts running. And then I push it further. And it stops. Okay, so the machine is plugged out. And now I'm just going to make a mark on this side where this cable is. Like that. Right here. And I'm going to cut out a hole right here with my Dremel. Super quickly. Just so that cable right there has somewhere to go. And I'm going to cut out a hole right here for this cable. And I'm going to... That's why I'm not soldered this proper the way I want it. Because I'm just going to desolder them super quickly. And pull them through that hole and secure them on this side. And then we're going to move on to the rest. So yes. Hole time. So, here's the box, and it has the holes, and I can just pull these wires through, like so. Good. And I can just take the PCB and put it in like this. Good. But what I have to do before I do anything else is I have to measure out and cut a slot for this thing to move. So tiny little thing here and I had a bunch of different ideas that I was gonna switch this out for this that came for the light and that I was gonna switch this out for potentiometer but I'm not sure it will work to do that uh, I mean I think it might but I think that this will just be easier to just measure out where this is gonna sit and cut a slot for this thing and press it in the only issue I'm having is that if you look at this you can see that this isn't much higher than anything else. So yeah, that might be an issue. But I'm gonna try to measure out where this has to sit. So I cut a tiny little slot out and just like I expected, the PCB doesn't stick through because the other components are too high. It would have been awesome if all of these things were on one side and the switch were on the other one. So it could have laid flat. But anyway, I took some pieces of uh, binding that I had left over from a guitar neck that I put black binding on. Maybe you saw the video. Uh, and I basically just glue them with super glue to it and build up the switch so that it got longer. So now I can mount this a little bit further in the box. So instead of basically being up here, I can go a little bit further into the box like this. So I just need to wait for this glue to dry because I put on a couple of layers and I also try to fill that little gap in between the plastic piece here and the actual switch just to make everything super secure. So it's going to take a little bit longer for it to dry but hopefully it will be worth it. Okay so I glued a tiny little ledge in there that is perfectly straight to this edge here and so now I can take my PCB with the longer switch and I can just drop it in here like so and it will lean against that wall there and on the front here stick out and be perfect. All I need to do now is put a bit of hot glue down here so that it stays in place or at least that's my plan. I might actually also just because I can find something that fits in there so that I can push it up like that but I'll only be able to do that in one corner. So see you in a bit. Time for some hot glue and just just to make sure that everything stays where I want it. So I'm just putting down some right here like so and then I'm also going to put some in the middle here. That's where I'm going to put this um, little lollipop stick. Just as a safety precaution. Something like that. Yeah 
It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be, because it's the inside. And... and no one really cares about the inside. Only the outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've measured out where I want to drill some holes. I just use my hole, I just make a mark here, or the other holes, like so. And now I can use my drill. And these holes are going to be easy to drill. Now, this one is going to be tricky, because I don't think I'm going to get to it. So, I might, I might have to drill it from underneath, which... Find the mark. There it is. And we turn this over on its side, and mark it there. Use our all. So, something like that. And yeah, it basically ended up exactly where I wanted it. Almost. And while I have it upside down, I can just drill it a little bit with a bigger one, just to countersink the screws. I can take one of the screws that I have and see if it's going to fit. And I can see that I need to finalize that just a little bit. Okay, so here it is right now. I just wanted to show it real quickly. The wiring isn't done yet. Uh, so here I have the switch. And I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a little click. And that's basically turning it on. And then it becomes speed. I drew a little symbol there, which I don't know if you can see. But I'm going to burn it in later, so it's going to be more noticeable. I'm probably going to write something here that needs to be written on a thing. Like that, you know. Pickup will go here. And the wire that is going to be spooled onto it is going to go here. I'm going to hold it here, and then this hand here, instead of cranking, like I did in my other videos, I'm just going to have my hand here, and I'm just going to be able to, like, move this and fine adjust it. And I might have to change some resistor or something on the PCB later. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, that will be in another video, though, because I need to do some experiments and, you know, make a pickup or with this setup, or try to make a pickup with this setup before I know anything, but I, from trying this out, I feel like turning this on and going, like, maybe, I know that that might look like halfway, but I cut the slot a little bit too big. So going like one third is the speed that I sort of feel like comfortable with, or that I think I will be comfortable with, and going all the way is uh, just way too fast. So, um, yeah, I think I want to put in some resistor or something that you will just do this a little bit differently or maybe change out the wheel or something uh, I have to think about all that but now let's quickly wire this up so um, that we can start it and see what happens I'm also gonna put on a knob of some sort yeah okay so it's gonna be a little bit fiddly in here to see what it is that I'm doing but here is the cable coming in and I've tied a knot on it so that it can't be pulled out. It's probably something that some of you are gonna say is a little bit too ghetto for your liking, but that's the way it is. This is a ghetto channel and sh video. I don't even know what I'm saying. So yeah, let's just put some solder on me. No. That's gonna hurt. Just flow together. And then, hopefully, we will be able to get this in there as well. And then these two lost connections. Something like that. And the last thing we have to do is we have to put electrical tape or heat shrink on it. I um, have two short cables. It just feels like it's going to be too... It's not, heat shrink is not going to work, so I'm going to have to fiddle around with this electrical tape. But as, as long as you um, are very sure that you are covering everything and that you're not leaving something exposed, um, it shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, it's a little bit 
fiddly this, and I'm sorry that my hands are so much in the way. I can't really do anything about it, but I'm just wrapping some shrink tube. And no, <laughs> that's not what I'm doing. Some heat, some tape, electrical tape. I'm just wrapping some of it around uh, the exposed pieces of the wires. So something like that. Doesn't look super pretty, but I'm fairly confident that it won't mess anything up for me. So now you can just put these wires in their place, something like something like that. And I'm just gonna quickly screw the screws in. Okay, so here it is right now, looking nice. And all I have to do, it's plugged in to the wall. And all I need to do is just press this. And it starts. And if I press it a little bit further, it goes faster. Now, there are a couple of things I want to say first just before we end the video, because we're going to end the video here. There are a couple of things I want to do. I want to switch this out, because now it's just a rubber band, and I'm just using that, you know, to make sure that everything is aligning the correct way. And I want to mod this so it can hold the pickup better, because if you've seen the other videos, you know I hot glue them on. I don't think that's a good idea. But the last thing I want to say is this is going into my outlet in the wall so it's potentially dangerous and especially because it's using the kind of voltage level where it will make your muscles lock and things like that so you won't be able to let go of things it doesn't have any electrolytic capacitors so it's not dangerous necessarily in that regard but it can still be dangerous just letting you know I don't want to go into details about what can happen, but I expect you can understand what can happen, or at least I hope you do. If you don't understand the risk you're taking doing something like this, you shouldn't do it at all. I have a friend who is an electricianist, or whatever it's called, and I'm going to ask him to look over this just so I'm not hurting myself with this. I don't think I will be, but I want to make sure I don't. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Stay awesome and cool, and go and build yourself a cool little, you know, pickup winder machine. It's actually a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun building this. A lot more fun <laughs> making this than I've had making pickups, because, yeah, it's been going... But hopefully it will go even better now that I have this tiny little box. Um, yeah, I just think this looks really cute. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, yeah. Stay awesome and cool and go and build yourself a pickup winder. Be careful so you don't hurt yourself and have fun with it. And, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!